Aloha and mahalo for listening to messages from Victory Outreach Hawaiian Islands. We pray that you are inspired, challenged, and encouraged to become all that God has called for you to be. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. We're going to read one verse right there. Verse 23, and I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas, amen? And I pray that you have a real blessed day today and also tomorrow, and that just, this just be a, that you end strong, that all of us end strong in the Lord, amen? And that you party with us on New Year's next year, next, next week, excuse me, amen? We're going to have a good time in the Lord. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, the Bible says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him what? And they will call him Emmanuel, which means, which means God is with us. Father, we love you, my God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that's here right now, God. Move in this place, God. Let no one leave the same, God. In Jesus' precious name, we all said amen and amen. We may be seated in the house of God. Amen. Tell the person next to you, God is with us. God is with us. That's what it means, Emmanuel. God is with us. We are doing a series right now entitled Weathering the Winter Storms. Weathering the Winter Storms. All of us are going to go through different seasons in our life. You're going to have different seasons, just like there's, there's seasons throughout the year, you know, and especially, and I know in Hawaii, we don't really experience winter like other places, but in the same way, you know, your winter may not be like my winter, spiritually speaking. Like what, what you consider your winter, in Hawaii, you know, they laugh at us when they say we're, we're freezing. I mean, this last couple of weeks, I've been freezing. I told you that I've been doing, especially since the surgery, I had surgery on my knee, some of you know that, and I've been really cold, Right? And so I do something weird that's very weird for me as sleeping with socks on, right? Not stocking, socks, right? <laughs> and um, man, it's been so cold, right? And uh, my wife would be getting ready. She's like, can we put on the AC? I'm like, sure, amen, you know? And, uh, but, but it's been cold. And, but people laugh at us. In California, it's more cold. But people from Chicago laugh at people from California. <laughs> California laughs at us. Chicago laughs at California, Alaska is laughing at Chicago, Antarctica is laughing at Alaska, right? Everybody's laughing at everybody, because everybody's winter is different. Do you know what I'm saying? So what takes me to go through it, maybe we could go through the same thing, and I don't even consider it winter. You may have car, car problems, and it puts you through changes, right? Right? But for me, maybe having a car problems, that may be the least of my concerns. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? So we got to be careful in judging people in what they consider their winter. But I got news for you. Regardless what your winter looks like, God is with you in your winter seasons. You may be having marriage problems, and that may be a huge winter season for you. Maybe you're, you're going through depression right now because, you know, it's Christmas time, and they say that, that, that depression increases during this time. And maybe, but, but I want you to know, if, if you're going through a winter season right now in your life, God is with you. I want you to know that every season you go through, God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. Emmanuel, God is with what? God is with us. That's what the coming of Jesus represented, the first coming. We are waiting for his second coming. Amen? Today we celebrate the first coming, but we want to live right because he's coming back. He is coming back. And, and so we're talking about storms and things like that. And um, one of the things that you learn when you read about storms, any kind of storm, when you read about winter storms, they always encourage you, you got to prepare for the storm before the storm even comes. You know how people do it, right? They, they go to Costco at the last minute. They go to Walmart, Target at the last minute to get ready for that storm that they say is coming, right? 
But some people, they live prepared for that stuff. How many know we got to stay prepared for the storm? We have to stay prepared for the storm. You are going to get hit. You are going to go through stuff. Your life is going to be shaken. Your faith is going to be shaken. Winter is going to come. A storm is going to come. And we have to be ready for it. They say you always, you got to prepare before the storm. That way you'll be ready when the storm comes. They also say you got to get your house ready for the storm. You know, we got to train our kids, our family to be ready for the storm. Make sure they're ready for the storm. Make sure everything is ready for a storm so we can last. We don't want winter to take us out. Amen? Three things that I want to encourage you to keep in times of trials, times of these storms. I want to encourage you to keep these three things. Keep your faith. Keep your faith during these trying times of your life. You've got to keep your faith. Also, you've got to keep your fire. I should say you want to keep your fire. Amen? It's hard to keep your fire, but you know when you need your fire the most? In the winter. Did you hear me? You know when you need fire the most? In the winter. In the cold. That's when you need your fire. So keep your faith, keep your fire, and keep your faithfulness. Stay faithful. You know, a lot of times in the wintertime, things close down. I wonder, do you close down during the winter? Some of us, we could tell when it's winter time, amen? Not because you're bundled up, but because you close down. You don't want to have life group. You're a life group leader. You don't want to have life group. You don't want to be on the worship team. That, don't, don't schedule me. I, I, don't schedule me. I'm not going to make it. Close down. We are not a people who close down during the winter. As a matter of fact, during the storm, we stay open on purpose. Amen? During the storm is when we make sure the fire is burning. We make sure. So we stay faithful. Someone say stay faithful. This year, I want to encourage you, when you go through trials, keep your faith in God. Don't lose your faith in the Lord. Don't let, you know, winter time, trying times, those moments to, to, to cause you to be defeated, but let your faith remain strong during those times. Let your fire, you know, stay lit for God and also stay faithful to whatever your post is that where God has you. Amen? It matters how you react during trials. How we react to trials. God is faithful in every season of our life. Amen? Now, you have a choice during trials. You have a choice during trials. What you're going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do during trials? You could do one of these things. You could leave. Some of us, we go through trials and we leave. We leave the church or we leave the Lord. Some of you, some get defended and say, I didn't leave the Lord, I just left the church. Oh, you sound in the flesh when you're saying that, by the way. <laughs> but some people react that way. I want to encourage you not to react that way. Maybe, maybe at some point this year, we reacted that way. Could I be honest with you? I've reacted that way. At certain points in my Christian, I mean, I haven't acted like that in many, 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 many years. But but I'll be lying to you if I if I said that I've never at, reacted that way. I have gotten hit and then missed church. Oh my God! But I had to learn how to stay faithful through trials and not leave, not leave my wife during trials, not leave church during trials, not leave God during trials. We got we to gotta stick it out. We got to learn how to, how to continue to go forward and not leave. Not leave God. Amen? So much the Bible talks about in regards to, you know, leaving the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 62. Luke 9, 62, it says, it says, Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. See, don't leave. 
You know, when you leave the Lord, you know, your protection is not as much there anymore. Your connection affects your protection. It's dangerous to be out there in the world. It is a dangerous thing to be out there to leave, leave the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return, faithful Israel, declares the Lord. Return. And that's what God is telling us this morning. Return. If you've left God, today is your day. Today is your day. Because could I be honest with you? Could I be honest with you about something? Did you know that today, probably some say December 25th is probably not the day Jesus was born. But it could be the day you can be born again. That's what Christmas is all about. That's what Christmas is all about. That's what, why Jesus came to the earth. Not for us to celebrate his birth once a year, but for us to be born again. And today could be your day to come back to God. For you, to, for you to receive that forgiveness of sins. Maybe you've been in sin. You've left God. You've left church. And today is your day to come back home. Give those people a clap because they're here. And they're here. And they're in the right place. And we're happy they're here. Amen? Amen. Some of you are like, I'm clapping for myself. Amen. <laughs> yeah, we're happy you're here. Amen. Jeremiah 3.22 says, return o, faith, o, o, return, o faithless sons. You know, we, we lose our faith sometimes as sons. As daughters in the Lord, return, O faithless sons. I will heal your faithlessness. Isn't that beautiful? Raise your hand if you need a healing right now of your faith right now. Maybe you're weary right now. Lord, heal people right now. God, heal those who are watching, those who are listening, those who are here right now, my God. Heal, as your word says in Jeremiah 3.22. I will heal your faithlessness. Help us to be faithful, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We could be faithful. You may have a rep for being unfaithful. God could change that rep. You're going to have a new rep. A new, a, 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 a new label on you. Amen? And, and, and you're going to be so consistent. Come on, I'm prophesying right now. You're going to be so consistent, people are going to be shocked that you told them that at one time you weren't consistent. Because you're going to be known as Faithful. Amen? Come on, clap. Clap for the Lord because you're going to be faithful. You're not going to leave. You're not going to leave God no more. You're not going to leave your family no more. You're not going to leave the will of God no more. You're not going to leave your ministry no more. You're not going to leave the call of God no more. Amen? Don't act like you're not capable of doing that. We all are. That's pride if you think you're not capable of doing that. We need to be dependent on the Lord. Amen? The other way we could react is some of us, we may not leave the church physically, but we react not by leaving, but by just being here and you're laying down. You're just laying down. Now, if you're just lying there, you're here in the church, you're here, you just come to church, you bring, you, you know, you're here, we're glad you're here. Amen? Because I'll be honest with you, as a pastor, I prefer you to be here lying down than, than leave and not with us at all. I prefer your ugly, tore up self. Amen? <laughs> it's true. I, that's just me. I'm not saying that's every, how everybody feels or all pastors feel like that, you know. Some say, man, you've got to be released to the devil. The devil beat you up and come back, amen. I would prefer that the Holy Ghost got a hold of you right here, amen. Now, you lying down or, or, or us lying down, if we find ourselves like that, it could mean one of two things. You're, you're either dead, you're spiritually dead, or you're asleep. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, if you're dead, that means you're, you're, you're physically here, but spiritually you're backslidden. You could be here, but far from God. You could be very far from the Lord, but physically faithful. You could be in ministry, yet faithful. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Some of us, you're like, man, if I don't pray for a few days, I miss church, I'm back out there all the way. It's like, Wow. Well, we got to stop doing that. Amen. <laughs> Some people could just they could keep coming. They're still drinking, still cussing, still clubbing, you know, still maybe sleeping with somebody that they shouldn't be sleeping with, right? And, but, but they're here. And while we praise God you're here, maybe you're spiritually very far from the Lord. Because sin does that. Sin causes us to be distant from the Lord. 
Now, once again, praise God, at least we're here. Amen. Amen. But spiritually, you may be spiritually dead. Okay, now, now, the other way you're laying down, so that some of us could be lying down, is we're here, but we're asleep. You're, 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 not, you're not dead, but you're asleep. In other words, like, man, you're, you're a spiritual giant in the Lord, but you're a sleeping giant right now. So we look, people look, God looks, your family looks, people, the family of God, people who could discern that you got a call, they look, and you're not active. You're asleep. You're, you're spiritually asleep. You're dormant in the house of God. And this morning, I want to encourage you to wake up. To wake up. And it could be that trials did that to you. It could be that, that, that something happened, and that's why you're no longer involved. You're no longer fulfilling the call of God in your life no more. So you're, you're here because you love the Lord. You know, you still love Him, but you're not obeying Him. But you love Him. And, and no one could take that from you. Love them, but you're just, you know, you're, you're asleep. You know, now what he may say about that, I don't know. You know, because you got to be careful with that. Because some people, they don't make it with the Lord if they're, they're asleep. The Lord sometimes gets upset at that, and sometimes, you know, it depends. Every situation is a little bit different, but wake up in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. The other thing that we can, way we could choose to, um, act during trials as we could lay down, we could leave the Lord, we could be right here lying down, dead or asleep, or we could walk but with a limp. Come on, somebody. Right now, I'm walking with a limp. I'm walking. Yes, indeed. I'm, I'm walking, but it's, with a, but, but it's with a limp. Okay. So um, it's interesting how people are, you know. How people are, because at first I was a crutches, right? You know, I think the first, I don't know, like two weeks or so, after, after surgery, I was in crutches. People are so nice to you when you're in crutches. <laughs> I'm serious. Dudes with tattoos are like, let me get the door for you, you know? <laughs> they hold the elevator for you. So nice. Everybody's so nice. You know, when someone has an obvious limp, you know, I think we got to be nice to them, amen? You know, because sometimes, you know, you rebuke someone, and man, that just may, it just may not be the season to rebuke them, amen? <laughs> but some of you are spiritually limping, like right now, I don't got the crutches, so people don't know that I got a limp. Do you understand what I'm saying? They don't know that I got a bad leg right now because I don't have the crutches, I don't got the leg brace, so, so it's not obvious, so you got people, you know, kids running up to you, wanting to grab your leg. I'm like, Ziki, I will punch you right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would, I'll punch him anytime. And it doesn't have to say. <laughs> Me and Ziki have thrown down before. That's another story. No, I love Ziki. He's a little MMA guy, you know. That's what I do with, the, with those who I know are going to be big and tough. I beat them up while they're young. Amen. So I would be like, yeah, I used to beat him up, and they're all big and buff. <laughs> but you're walking with a limp. But praise God we're walking. Amen. Praise God we're here. But the storm may be affecting you, and you're spiritually walking with a limp. And this is where I think we need to get to. We need to, we need to stop limping. When we go through storms, in other words, a person that limps during storms, spiritual storms, you're the one that, or we're the one, or you're the one, however you, you know, if the shoe fits, right? It, that, that, um, that you make it obvious that you're going through it all the time. You understand what I'm saying? And, and let me tell you, that's not of the Lord to do that. You know, I, I, we got to bring it to the fourth one, which is, you know what we should be doing? Leaping. Leaping. Did you hear that? We got to be doing what? Leaping. How are we supposed to act during trials and tribulations? What does the Bible say? We're supposed to do what? Consider it pure what? Joy. James 1, 2 says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. You didn't know the Bible speaks pigeon? It says many kinds of trials, right? <laughs> Consider it pure what? Joy. Joy. Isn't that isn't incredible. 
He's saying you should be leaping when you go through stuff. You should keep praising when you go through stuff. You should keep on worshiping when you go through stuff. You got to keep your hands lifted. If there's any time that you need to keep lifting your, those hands and clapping those hands and dancing in the spirit and jumping in the spirit and turning in the spirit, it's when you're going through it. It's when you're going through trials and tribulations. That's what the Bible says. That means if we're not acting like that, there's a sense of disobedience or there's, there's an obvious sign that we need to grow. We need to grow. Wave at me if you feel you, you, know, you need to grow. Amen? I need to grow. We all need to grow. Amen? I want to encourage you not to no longer walk around limping. In other words, in defeat, you know, with a defeated demeanor. You know, where, where, where what you're going through is obviously affecting you, where you're walking around all hurt. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm trying to teach you what the Bible tells us to do. He says, consider it pure joy. Yes. He said that, not me. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith, see, your faith is being tested. The testing of your faith produces perseverance. You've got to learn to persevere. A lot of us, we don't know how to persevere. That's why we go back to getting high. That's why we break up. That's why we do those type of things because we don't know how to persevere. That's why we quit because we don't know how to persevere. You could blame any, everyone you want, but we got to learn how to persevere. We got to persevere. It says, let perseverance, verse 4 of James 1, it says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Not lacking anything. How do you react during winter times? You know, in closing, I want to I I tell you a little bit about Mary, Jesus' mother. He, uh, she, um, she, she felt troubled, you know. She was, it was, she was going through a troubling time when, when the angel of the Lord appeared to her during, during the, the, her... Um, what she conceived was of, of uh, what she uh, was spoken to by, uh, by an angel. You know, she was, the Bible says she was troubled about it. She was troubled. You know, it, it affected her relationship. She was about to get married with Joseph, right? God had to, you know, send an angel to minister to Joseph through a dream. You know, you see all these different people, and you see the way Mary even reacted and the way Mary acted during that season. And you learn a lot from Mary. And a couple of lessons right before I close, just four things real quick in regards to just some lessons from Mary when she went through that time. Number one, we need to start fearing God again. Excuse me. Number one, I want you to write this actually. Lay your life down for a greater good. Lay your life down for a greater good. The lesson from Mary is lay your life down for a greater good. Mary, Mary, you know, was obedient, and we got to learn to be obedient. Your obedience, our obedience, will save lives. Mary's obedience, even though it, it was going to, you know, cause some inconvenience, if you will, on her life, but. But she did it, and, and she was willing to for the greater good. Are you willing to obey the Lord for the greater good? So number one, one of the lessons we learned from Mary is lay your life down for the greater good. Secondly, we learned this. Learn to, the, to respond right to the Lord. Learn to the, respond right to the Lord. She responded correctly. Her, her, her answer ultimately was a Yes. Your yes will save lives. Not only will your, 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 will your obedience save lives, but your yes, which is similar. Your yes saves lives. When God asks you to do something, you got to say what? Yes. You got to say yes. When we say no, less lives are being saved. Do you understand the... the, the the, the, the dilemma there. This is something major when we say no. 
When God wants you to be doing something for him, and we say no, when we say no, not now, when we're saying no, and he wants us to do it, it affects the growth of the kingdom of God. It affects the amount of people that are reached for his honor and glory. So the second thing we need to learn, that we can learn from Mary, is to learn to respond to the Lord right. We need to respond to God by saying, God, I'm your servant. I will do what you want me to do. That's what our response should be to God. God, I'm your servant. I will do what you want me to do. Can you say that with me? Come on, say that. Say, God, God. I'm your servant. I will do what you want me to do. See, that's the, that's the attitude that we should have. That was Mary's attitude. That was her response to God. In Luke chapter 1, verse 38, it says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left. May your word to me be fulfilled. That's how we need to be. We need to say yes to the Lord. We need to obey the Lord. Thirdly, third lesson we learned from Mary is allow God to interrupt and inconvenience your life and your plans. Your life and your plans. Allow God to interrupt and inconvenience your life and your plans. Some of you are acting like if that's a rude, rude point, right? Because it sounds rude that we're, we're insinuating that God is interrupting or that God is inconveniencing us. But the bottom line is, a lot of us have plans. And we need to surrender our plans to the Lord. And we need to say, not my will, but thy will be done. His plans are better than our plans. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are better than our ways. And so we need to, res- we need to allow God to interrupt and inconvenience our life and our plans. Will you let them? I know you got plans. I know you got plans, but will you let them interrupt? Maybe some of you are making certain decisions right now, but will you let them interrupt that? So you got certain plans that you got, but will you let them interrupt that? Mary did. Mary had plans. You know, she had her, she had this guy, she, Joseph, she was betrothed to, and then here comes God saying, hey, I, I need you to be used as a vessel. Mary was willing to be a vessel. Will you be willing to do that? See, your sacrifice, because that was a sacrifice she had to make. Your sacrifice will save lives. If you live your life in a way where you're sacrificing for others to be, uh, for others to be saved, people are getting saved through your sacrifice. No, you may not gain much, you know, on this earth through it, but, but, but you gain by, by heaven gaining. Fourth and lastly, I'm asking the musicians to make their way that we learn from Mary is don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear stop you. I want to encourage you not to let fear stop you. You know, all over this passage, these passages, when you read Matthew, Luke, and you read these passages about the, about the birth of Jesus, people were struck with all kinds of fear. You know? John the Baptist's dad had fear. You know, Um, Mary had some fear. Different people would have fear. Fear. The kind of fear that we need to have is the fear of God. You know, I don't think there's enough people today that fear God. Do you fear God? Do you fear the Lord? Because if we feared God, we'd stay away from sin. We may love sin because some sins we're real bound to, we're real attracted to. We really, you know, we gravitate to them. But, you know, if we fear the Lord, man, it, it, would, it would trump that. So I want to encourage you to, I'm not saying that to discourage anyone. I'm, I'm saying to encourage you to say, God, I want to fear you more. I want to fear you more. Some of the sins, you know, that God asks us to stop doing, they're difficult to stop doing. You really need the fear of God to stop doing them. Because naturally, very hard to do. But if you fear the Lord, it makes it easier. Fearing God makes it easier to overcome whatever you're being tempted with. 
I want to challenge you and encourage you to fear God more than failure. I want to encourage you to fear that I want I want you to listen to this. Fear fear of God says no. I mean, excuse me. Fear of failure says no. Fear of failure says no. But fear of God says go. Mary said, let's do this. Let's go. Let's do this. She had fear. You read the story. She had fear. But you know what? She feared God more. More than fearing her failure, she feared the Lord. You could have fears. You could feel inadequate. Hey, you know what? You're looking at one of the most inadequate feeling guys up here. I, I, I feel very inadequate to, to be called to the Lord. Very inadequate. I'll be the first one to tell you that I don't qualify. I'll be the first one to tell you that I don't deserve to be called to the Lord. I'll be the first one to tell you that. But you know what? I fear God more than my inadequacies. And I trust the Lord. And I believe He knows what's best. I believe that He knows what's best more than I know what's best. Would you believe that? You know that's hard to do for us? You would trust Him more if you trusted Him. You understand what I'm saying? If you really trusted the Lord, you'd trust Him more. I want to encourage you. You can have your own opinion on how things should be done, how you should respond, what you should do, but, but trust His opinion more. Fear God. That's what I mentioned earlier. We need to start fearing God again. Amen? I'm asking you to stand. And this morning, I want to pray for some people. I want to pray for people, whatever you're going through. I want to encourage you that during these trying times in your, in your life, during trying times, whether now or in the future, keep faith. Keep your fire and keep your faithfulness. I want to encourage you not to leave. I want to encourage you not to lie down during storms. I want to encourage you not to even have a limp. I want to encourage you to leap during storms. And I want to encourage you to be willing to lay down your life for the greater good. We need some soldiers, some warriors for God. Mary was a soldier. You know, women are soldiers too. Mary was a warrior. She was a soldier for God. I want to encourage you to learn to respond right to the Lord. Say yes to Him. Allow God to interrupt and inconvenience your life and your plans. And don't let fear stop you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, right now, my God, I pray a move of your Holy Spirit right now in this sanctuary, God. Move in a mighty way, oh God. God, let your anointing to fall. Let your presence to fall right now, my God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. I mentioned to you that, that one of the things you learn when you study storms, or, and, and prepare, we got to prepare for storms. You got to prepare for storms. So if you're here and you're going through a storm and you need God, you know, I want you, you know, I want you to come to the altars if you're going through a storm. If you're not going through a storm, I want to challenge you to prepare for a storm, to spiritually prepare for a storm. I want you to take a step of faith and, and come to God right now. Maybe you're a backslider. You could come back to the Lord. Maybe you're spiritually asleep. You're here, but you're far from the Lord. Come to the Lord. Today is your day to be born again. If you're here and you're going through it or you're limping, you're here. You're not lying down no more, but you're limping. Today is your day to come and get your leap back. You came limping, you're going to leave leaping. Come on. In the name of Jesus, come. Come to the altars. Come. Come. You need Jesus. You need more of God. You need the presence of the Lord. Come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your spirit strong in me. My flesh may fail.
could pull up、um, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, there's a famous saying Jesus is the reason for the season. You heard that before, right? I agree with that. Agree with that 100%. But I'm going to add to that you're the reason for the season. If I were to post that, people would misinterpret that so much. Like, I'm the reason for the season. We're the reason for the season. Jesus didn't come for Jesus. Jesus was fine up in heaven. Come on, somebody. Jesus came for us. Can I tell you the true reason for Christmas? It's us. You're the reason for the season. Isn't that powerful? That's powerful. That's how much he loves us. Paul shared that same feeling. Look at in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. It says here, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Here's a trustworthy saying that, that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. How many thank God for that? Amen. Christ Jesus came to Christmas. That's Christmas right there. Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners. And this is what Paul said of whom I am the worst. See the humility there? That's how we need to feel, man. Like, man, I don't even deserve Jesus. You know, man, I'm the worst sinner. That kind of humility. God loves humility. God hates pride. He's not like that. Next verse, please. Then it says, then it says, but for that very reason, what did he just finish saying? I'm the worst sinner. But for that very what? Reason. See, Paul was saying, I was the reason why he came. Paul was saying, because we were sinners is why he came. Isn't that powerful? Paul's saying, I'm the reason for the season. God loves us, man. God loves you so much, guys. God loves you so much. I know you want to quit on yourself. Don't quit on yourself. God's not quitting on you. God loves you. This is, you're, you're going to end the year strong in the Lord. I don't care how the, this year ended for you or how it started, you're going to end leaping in the Lord. Amen? You're going to end strong. It's going to be a new year for you. We're not just saying that. We believe that in Jesus' name. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want to congratulate Brother Keppa and Sister Megan. They got married yesterday. Love you, Keps. Love you, Megan. God bless you guys and the tribe. They got a tribe. Five kids. Amen? And listen, it's a new beginning for them, it's a new beginning for you. How many, how many receive that right now that it's a new beginning? Amen? Some of you, you you're, 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 making, you're making a comeback. Amen? You're making a comeback in Jesus' name. Amen?、Uh, I'm going to call Brother George if he could say a prayer for everybody right now. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes and bow your heads. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Excuse me, I'm a little broken this morning. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for every single person that's here. The young, the older God, the moms and dads, the families, the marriages, the newly married God, Lord. Our pastors, our leadership, the worship team, God, the teachers in the back, the sound people, God, the green room people, God, Lord, the ushers, security, everybody here. Oh, God, just like our pastor said, you love us so much. Amazing grace. How amazing is His grace. And we thank you, Lord. I pray that your hand be upon every person. I pray that we would, Lord, be so excited, God, to usher in, God, Lord Jesus, this beautiful season, Lord, and this new year coming, oh God. And Father, we pray that you cover every person here right now, Lord Jesus, God. Lift up any burdens, lift up any cares, lift them up, God, Lord. I pray, God, Lord Jesus, my God, that they would sense and feel the very presence, the glory right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have your way right now. Strengthen, strengthen every person, my God, Lord. Move in the power of your spirit. Let your spirit tug. Let there be a tugging, Lord, a tugging in the heart of Almighty God. Let there be, Lord, Father God, a prompting of the spirit, my God, a yearning of the spirit, Almighty God. Lord, cover your people, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we magnify your name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! In Jesus' name.
in Jesus name thank you father we worship you Jesus worship the Lord everybody worship the Lord come on it's Christmas time right now worship with a smile right now worship and praise him with a smile